Hey everybody, welcome back. So as strange as it sounds, we're doing a video today on why I bought this scooter. So we're not up on the normal table today, that way. <laughs> today we're taking a look at this uh, generic Chinese scooter. Its model number is XY50QT. It is a 49cc scooter. And I picked this up very, very inexpensively. Let's say under $300. Um, it is practically brand new. It sat, it's a 2008, and it sat in somebody's garage, and they never rode it. There were a few scratches and dings on it, I suspect mostly from storage and things falling on it over the years. Other than, and other than that, it's in great shape. So the person I purchased it from agreed to take it to a uh, mechanic and have everything looked over and carburetor flushed out or a new one put in i'm not quite sure what they did it looks like a new one when i opened up the engine and uh check out the gas tank and everything looked in a-ok -okay shape starts up great runs great unfortunately can't ride it yet because i have to go up to the dmv nevada makes you uh pay a five dollar fee to uh get a plate one time fee and that's it so anyway that will be coming in the future but we have some stuff to do to it first um, i am planning on repaying it because black is a very I don't know, heat-inducing color out here in the desert, so I like it a more flat color. Probably going to go with OD green, and uh, OD green and black, so the parts that are black rubber there in the middle will stay black, and the body panels I'll just take off and do them OD green with some clear coat over it. That way, if anything gets damaged or it gets scratched, I can just paint right over it and start again. <laughs> anyway, the real reason behind this is because I was thinking fuel economy, and I was also thinking that i got one vehicle. If that vehicle dies... I have no transportation. Um, this thing here can take me anywhere very, very inexpensively. Uh, in the kit in the middle there, under the seat, I will open it and show you. I have a very, the start of what I'd call a survival kit. It's not really a survival kit. It's more of a just-in-case type kit. Um, and we will be upgrading that, and we'll get into all that later in another video. I just wanted to document the start of this and what I'm going to be doing to it. Um, I am going to be changing out the tires. They're kind of slick, um, more for road than, than off-road. And being that there's a lot of dirt and crud out here and off-road stuff, um, you know, it's rocks, driving through rocks. I want to get a little bit more knobby tires. Again, that's down the road a bit. But let's take a look up close. I'm going to give you a walk around as best I can with my car there. I wanted to film it facing inward here because outside it's just too sunny and it will get washed out. So uh, I'm going to give you a walk around let you take a look at it. All right, it. so I'm going to start in the front. Now, as you can tell... Um, that fender was silver and black. I've already started some OD green. I wanted to see how it looked. If I need to camo this in the future, I can always paint it some other color. But I like the OD green. It's a flat, kind of non-reflective surface. It'll keep it a little bit cooler. Um, again, it's outside, so you're going to be out in the out heat and everything else. But uh, at least it'll keep the, uh, the frame itself a little cooler. It's not as bad as sitting on something hot and black and... In the, in the blazing sun, and also it gives a little bit of, you know, I can put it out somewhere if I'm camping with it or whatever and not be seen, because um, black is very noticeable in the desert. You know, flat black or straight black is really noticeable from a distance. So anyway, that's the front. You'll notice I've taped up the headlight. I'm going to paint this in sections. So I'm going to do, you know, the front, and then take this piece off and do this, and do the fender, do the sides, little bits at a time. I'm not going to try to tape everything up and do it all in one day. It's going to be a project. It's going to be fun, you know, and that's the point of it. Um, the main reason I like this is because of the gas mileage. These things get like 100 miles to the gallon. It takes a, it has a 1.5 gallon tank. So, I mean, how can you go wrong? If gas gets expensive, and that's another consideration, if gas gets expensive, you've got this here to uh, keep you moving around when you need, need to get around. Also, too, it makes for a little bit lighter, more agile vehicle, as opposed to a huge car. I can take this in and out of places where I can't take a full-size car. So, let's walk around here. Here's your controls. Not much to them. Doesn't need to be. And that's going to be pretty basic. Yes, I'm probably going to put a portable ham radio in this. Um, more like a handheld mounted in here on a semi-permanent basis. Uh, once I get my trunk situation figured out, and we'll get to that in a second, I'll show you. We'll, uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do with this. Another cool feature of this, this has an electric start. That's this over here. But it also has a kickstart right down there. So those of you worried about EMP, you got two ways to start this vehicle. If the battery gets croaked or whatever, I can still start it. If the electronics in it get messed up, it'll still start. 
So, we'll get under the seat in a sec. That's where my kit's going to be. This is the back here. I'm going to show you real quick. Move you around. Um, I put the uh, little reflective strip on there because underneath it is all scratched up like it was rubbing up against something the whole time it was there. That's going to be where the plate has to go. Unfortunately, Nevada makes you get a plate. Uh, this is the back here. Now, this is kind of going to be... Let me put this down and show you this a little bit. Actually, I'll move you over this way. This is where the... Um, my back is going to go. Now, here's the, the funky part on this. This is the only part of the scooter I don't like. The gas tank is right here. And it is a locking gas cap. Pretty cool. But, if I put something here, like a basket, an ammo can, whatever, i got to worry about that. And, on top of that, there's another brake light in here. Now, you notice this is loose. I took it off last night to see what I was dealing with underneath. There is a wire that comes out and a brake light. So, we're probably going to mess around with this a little bit. I might get some kind of situation where it comes out here, here, and here, and I have a little basket on the end or whatever. Um, I might get a box that I just put a hole in, you know, a container of some kind that I just put a hole in that I can reach in and grab my, you know, fill up my gas. Gas, again, is not, you know, at, at 1.5 gallons and over 100 miles per gallon. You're not going to be putting a lot of gas in this all the time. But it's still kind of an annoyance. Um, I was kind of hoping for a longer thing. And I also might possibly take this metal piece off under here and maybe fabricate something that sticks out a little bit further and put it on there. I was really hoping to do like a plastic ammo can or something really low budget and easy but yet fun to kind of keep in tune with the whole feeling of the, the OD green and everything. And also to give me a whole lot of storage space. Now, let me open up under right. the seat. It does have a lock on it. Very rudimentary lock. I wouldn't put anything super valuable in here. But as you can tell, I got my, you know, I showed you this kit before, sort of, um, and why I got that miniature stove. Got a couple of Mountain House meals in here. These will change. Maybe I'll put some homemade MREs. I don't know for sure. I do like the freeze-dried stuff because that way I don't have to worry about it getting bad in the heat. Uh, again, I have my knife, fire starter, some paracord. They did come with a very basic scooter tool kit. I will have to look inside here and see what's in here. See if there's anything I need to change out. Uh, I'm going to put on my water filter, my MSR pocket water filter. And, of course, we uh, reviewed this guy a few days ago. I do have a canteen with water in there. I moved everything and everything's moving. <laughs> my uh, mini alcohol stove in here, the titanium alcohol stove, inside this little kit here with my little cup and everything. And I do have a uh, tarp in here for a shelter. Uh, again, I'm not, you know, going to be going out where I'm looking to get lost in the woods for weeks at a time with this. This is just a just-in-case type thing. You know, you're coming back from a friend's house and you break down on the side of the road and it's late, whatever. You know, again, not all that, you know, critical. But it's nice to have some extra emergency supplies. And let's face it, I'm a prepper. I'm going to have emergency supplies in all my vehicles. About the only thing I'd probably add in here is one of those emergency uh, sleeping bags and maybe some kind of small blanket, you know, those emergency bivvies, and maybe a small blanket. Now, I do intend to take this out and maybe camp with it, you know. Maybe we'll go somewhere on the video and camp out somewhere, but that's going to be how it starts out. So, let me wrap up. So, really quick, I wanted to show you how it starts. Um, I'm going to get in there and start it up. You're going to move the key into the position. Okay. I'm going to hold the brake down. Hit the start button. And that's it. That simple. <laughs> There's another thing I didn't tell you about before, um, this also has 63 miles on it. It has barely been used. Um, it is a 2008. Like I said, I had somebody go through it, or he had somebody go through it, make sure everything works, and it works perfectly. Um, it does idle a little high. I was told that's okay. Plus, the idle control is down in there. If I ever do decide I want to mess with it, it's right down in there, and I can get to it under the seat. So that's how easy it starts, and I'm pretty impressed for such an older... An older vehicle that sat and didn't get used. Uh, these things pretty much are bulletproof, um, but still, it sat for a long time and didn't get used. So, let me wrap this All up. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope I didn't ramble too much here. I'm just kind of excited about it. Um, it's going to be a form of alternate transportation, and I think as preppers, we should always think of another form of transportation besides our car or our bug-out vehicles or whatever, because you never know what's going to happen. You know, your vehicle could be disabled. So having a backup mode of transportation is really important and even if it's a bicycle even if it's one of those bicycles with a little engine on it or something like this 
that can get you around in an emergency. Also, too, you've got the benefit of this thing is extremely uh, economical on fuel. So if fuel gets expensive, it's really no big deal. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out our Amazon affiliate store down below. Uh, almost everything I review, except for this, I try to put it in the store. And don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link as well. If you're interested in getting started in uh, freeze-dried food storage, Thrive Life is an excellent place to start. Um, you can sign up as a consultant. You can just buy whatever you want individually. It doesn't matter. There's no, uh, there's no rules as far as that goes. If you don't want to sign up for anything, you can, you can just buy individual stuff. If you want to become a delivery customer, you can do that too. You don't need to be a consultant. And don't forget to check out our Food for Patriots link down below. That's preparewithiridium.com. You definitely want to get yourself some, uh, some freeze-dried food. And that, uh, those are excellent set-and-forget type situations. If you don't want to think about what you want to get, you just want to have an emergency two- or four-week kit. We have a sale going on right now. You can go in there and get it. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.